Welcome to Grace Church of the Nazarene's Back to School service. We hope you enjoy our praise and worship experience and a charge to the students by our very own SDMI Director, Samir Major. If you were impacted in any way, like, comment, and share the good news. Be blessed. already here and looking down on us from heaven. God, I just ask that you have your way in this service. Have your way in each and every one of our hearts today, that God, because only you can transform, only you can make a new Jesus. And as you do all of these things, we ask for in our personal lives, God. That God, I just pray that you have your way. Have your way in the service. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in our life, Jesus. And even the persons on the two sides of me, in the back of me, and in the front of me, that God, I just ask that you enlarge their territories, that God. Enlarge their territories, that God, that God, I just praise you on their behalf. I come in agreement with every prayer they're praying right now, Jesus, because you are great and you answer every prayer, God. There's none like you, Jesus. We call on you collectively this morning because there's none like you. We come before you because there's none like you. There's nothing that no one else can do that you can't do better, Jesus. And I praise you and I glorify you because there's none like you. And I forever say there's none like you. Let God have your way again in this service. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus, you love me too much,
peace I'd rather be, oh God. There's freedom in your presence, Jesus. Everything we need is in your presence, Jesus. We pour out our love on you, oh God. Just want to be. We just want to be in your presence. We just want to be in your presence. I will speak with clarity 
and in a way that the person that needs to hear what I am saying today will understand. I pray that someone's life will be transformed in this service today. living in and considering everything that is going on in the world today. It is so easy to lose faith. It is so easy to lose hope. It is so easy to give up and it is so easy to throw in the towel. If I am allowed to be honest, completely honest for a moment, with no judging, I would like to share something with you. Now I am not sharing this with you because I am looking for self-pity or for attention. I am sharing this with you because it is my hope that what I say to you today encourage you and motivate you as you go on. This past year was indeed a challenging one for me. Initially, I kept telling myself, you got this. You will make it through this. God got you. I told myself this after the death of my grandfather. I told myself this after the death of my uncle, the death of my cousin, the death of family friends. Then I lost my aunt this year. And this when it began to get challenging for me. Um, to add to that, I lost another uncle. Then there was my uncle uncle now, I have other uncles, but this, this uncle was that uncle. And right after was my cousin. At this point, if I be honest, I doubted everything. Everything that I believed. I grew up in a Christian home. Everything that I was taught growing up, I grew up in church. Everything that I was taught throughout the years, I started to doubt. And nothing made sense to me anymore. Now, during this time when I was losing people, this was during a time when I was still having problems in my home. The devil tried to come up in my marriage. The devil tried to come up in my kids. And this just added to that. Now, I don't look nothing like what I went through, as you can see today. But... Thank you, Mother Queen. <laughs> now, I told a few persons, and they can attest to that, that I was taking a break. Or I think I said I was taking a break. But what I actually meant was I was stepping down. I was stepping down from my post as STMI president. I was stepping down of the praise team. I wasn't coming to church no more, if I be honest. I... Like I said, I, I, I made up my mind that I wasn't coming to church anymore. Y'all know how we Christians do. We miss one Sunday. Then the Sunday after that, we ain't feel like coming. So we ain't coming. And then it, it continues. Tell we don't go to church no more. That's where I was in my life. And although I wasn't coming to church anymore, I just got a, I just, um, got a job as a full-time teacher at BMEF. So I still had planned, even though I lost my uncle, I was still going to work. Um, when it was time to go to work, when school opened, I was still going to go to school. I was still going to do whatever I had to do to do whatever I had to do at work and do it at, the, at my best. But I wasn't coming to church. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, Samia, I, I had to check myself. So one day I was sitting down and I was like, Samia, so you mean to tell me, despite everything we're going on in your life, you can go to church. No, you ain't going to go to church, but you can go to work. So I, and I was like... I ain't really paid no mind, but the voice keeps saying, seriously, that's what you can do, seriously. But at that time, all I knew was, I just can't. Nessa could attest to that. I just can't. But I was reminded that God would not put more on me than I can bear. It was at that point I was reminded that I have to get put through the test in order to have a testimony. It was at that point that I was reminded that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I was remember, reminded that 
against all odds. God is still faithful. His promises still stand. He will never leave me, nor will he forsake me, and that all of my help cometh from him. Some of us, or some of you may be faced with problems at home, problems in your marriage, problems on the job, rebellious kids. Some of you may be at a point in your life where your back is against the wall and you feel like you don't have no one, nowhere else to turn. If you don't take it from nobody else, take it from me. Turn to God. Get down on your knees. Cry out to God. And I ain't talking about no little cry. I ain't talking about cry, cry like that's all you have left. Cry out to God. See God face. You know some of us stop reading. Get back into your Bible. Y'all, we know we need to do it. Now it's time to do it. If it was never a time before to do it, now is the time. Take it from me. But I just thought I should encourage you a bit. But now I would like to say to the children that may or may not be returning to school. I understand that even at a young age, there are some of you that face challenges. Some of you suffer from anxiety. Some of you have a very low self-esteem. Some of you may have a difficult time dealing with problems at home or peer pressure. Some of you may feel like you cannot succeed in the educational system. But I would like for some of my warriors to come in agreement with me as I remind these kids that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. At this young age, you may need help. You may need guidance, and that is okay. You are not alone. God has placed people in your life to help you. God is there to help you. God has a plan for your life. Trust and believe that he will get you through this. So as you start off this school year, let's start with a renewed mindset. Now, I have a friend. I ain't calling no names. But she was posting about politics. Now, she ain't taking no sides. But one thing that stood out to me, what she said was, when you come with these prophecies about which party is going to win, you got to say it with your chest. So today, what I want each and every one to do is stand up, stand firm, stand up, literally stand up, stand firm, and say, in spite of my circumstance, y'all got to say it with your chest, though, in spite of my circumstance, in spite of whatever is going on in the world today. In spite of whatever I am faced with today. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now y'all got to say that last part like y'all really believe that. Even if you got to shout it to the rooftop. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all continue to pray my strength. Right now I'm going to call. Right now I'm going to call pastor to come and pray for all of the kids that is going back to school. I also want pastor to pray a special prayer for those that may be going through something. And I know, I mean, I... Most of you probably have experienced it as well, but I can, I can only speak for myself. I am one of those persons who back was against the wall. I felt like there was nowhere for me to turn. I wanted to read my Bible, but I couldn't. I wanted to pray. It was just hard. So people like that, if you, if you may be going through something like what I am going through, I encourage you to get prayed for. Thank you. At this time, I just want all the kids to stand up who are going back to school, whether it's primary school, high school, college. Just stand right where you are. And I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes right where you are. All the kids should be standing. Like Sister Samia said, also anyone who um, you might be going through, and you say, I need encouragement. Well, the word should have encouraged you at this point, but I just want to seal those words of encouragement with a prayer.
you can stand up as well. Heavenly Father, we bless you. God, I praise you and thank you. And I don't know about anybody else, but the moment we came in church that I could have felt your presence in this house. Before the praise team starts singing, your presence was already here strongly. And I thank you for the way your spirit moved in this house today, God. God, we come calling on your power and your anointing right now, God. There's so much going on in the world, God, and the only place that we can look is to the hills from you, to you. Our help comes from the Lord today. If we mind the news, if we mind Facebook and WhatsApp, we'd live in fear. Oh, but God, when I think about the fact that you got the whole world in your hands and you're just watching, not only from heaven, but you're living in us, you're present, you're observing, and because I know that you're real and you're active, God, I know for a fact that you will take care of your people. You will look over your people. And so I cover these children. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. We're not just sending them and releasing them to school. Whether it's virtually or face-to-face, -face, we're not just sending them out, but we're sending this prayer ahead of them. Even to the ones who might watch this service virtually I pray for them as well I pray that God's hands cover our children because I don't think we know how easily our lives could change and transform by one incident something could happen to our children in one second and it could change our life forever Oh, but God, I send prayer ahead of every hurt, every plan, every scheme. Every destructive vice of the devil against our children. We cover them with your blood. We cover them with your anointing. We declare, God, that your angels will go with them, God. Their children. We cannot effectively monitor them. Teachers cannot effectively monitor them. Administrators, I'm one. I, we cannot effectively monitor them. But God, you are omnipresent. And if you don't cover nobody else, cover the people of Grace Church of the Nazarene. I pray for those persons who might be going through right now. Those who might be hurting. Families and homes where the devil is attacking us. We put up our banner today and we declare devil that you have lost again grace church I don't think y'all heard me we declare devil that you have lost again we declare God that you are fighting our battles even right now in the name of Jesus do I have a witness in here God you are fighting our battles for us we're going to pray, we're going to fast, we're going to read our word, God, but there's some battles you got to take command. Every demonic scheme, every negative word spoken against us, every negative word spoken against you, every lie that's mixed with truth, I cancel it because it's still a lie in the name of Jesus. They will not prosper. I plug them up from the root right now in the name of Jesus. And I plant the very word of God in our hearts and in our minds. God, remove the scales from our eyes so that we can see clearly, God, what you're doing in our lives. 
I thank you for this service that is so refreshing, so energizing and inspiring. Your spirit moved in a mighty and special way. And so I release faith, I release hope into the atmosphere. That heart that is hurting, grab a hold of your faith. You are in control. You are in control, God. I don't care how it looks, God. I'm concerned about how this chapter ends. I'm concerned about how this chapter ends. And at the end of the story, God, you already declare that we already have the victory in Jesus' name. And I don't know about anybody else, but I believe that within all my heart, I already have the victory. So don't judge me by where I'm at right now. We already have the victory. And so we give you the thanks and we give you the praise that our children are covered, that aching hearts have been rejuvenated and they've received the word to encourage them. And we're sealing with the prayer, God, that you're going to heal, you're going to set free. You're going to do a new work, God. You're going to restore. And we give you the thanks. We give you the praise even right now. Someone give the Lord a shout of praise up in here.